Hi everyone, I am Patrick Seaver. This is Brian Fiore. Together we are Just Got Played. We are at the Cloak and Blaster. It was actually just recently Talk Like a Pirate Day. Funnily enough, we just got done playing Dice of Pirates. Join us at the Cloak and Blaster for Dice of Pirates. Arr, Brian. Are you ready for Dice of Pirates, Brian? I am, I am. Pirates, Brian. Uh, yes, I, I... Are you going to tell us about it? I believe I will, if we're ready. Um, Dice of Pirates is a three to six player game, although there's also a two player duel mode. And, um, and basically the, the players are assuming the roles of pirate captains, sailing the high seas, plundering gold from both uh, uh, the islands that they, that they pillage and also from your fellow sea captains. Basically there are seven dice and whoever the first player's turn is, is going to roll all of those dice. Now, there's a number of different, uh, different things that you can get. If you get coins, um, for every three coins that you get, you're gonna be able to plunder one gold from the high seas. If you have six, six coins, you're gonna be able to get two. In the two player duel mode, you're actually gonna be stealing your gold directly from your opponent. Now, in the two player duel mode, uh, each player starts with uh, five gold. But in the three to six player game, I believe the first player starts with one and the other players all start with two. So there's a little bit of gold to kind of go around. When you're stealing it from the uh, the high seas, there's uh, you know obviously gold that each of the players have, and then there's kind of like gold in the bank um, or the tin, um, if you will. But uh, in the dual mode, you're just stealing everything from your from your opponent. Um, so the other the other things that you can get are you can get the swords or the flags, and we have a prototype version of the game, so it's going to look a little bit different when it's produced. But uh, the swords or the flags. Um, are basically your raid dice and whenever you uh, get enough of those you need at least three to be able to launch a raid phase in which you're gonna basically be doing combat against your opponent to steal their gold. Um, if you happen to roll a ship though you're going to uh, pass that ship of fate over to your opponent and then they're gonna get to roll that dice and we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then finally if you happen to roll the Kraken um, this is basically going to shut, act, uh, act to lock down your dice and shut down your turn. When you get three of them during your turn, your turn is over and, it, and uh, the next player will get to roll all of their dice. So after you roll all of your dice, um, you can choose to re-roll your coins if you want to again, but your Krakens stay up and your swords stay up for your raid dice. Your swords stay up then? Yes. And your, Our, your Kraken... Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. Sorry. So that way we can find the buried treasure later with our swords that are upright. Kraken. Um, but before, if you had uh, rolled a ship, and that, that was the, the ship phase or the, uh, the winds of fate, I believe they called it, had passed to your opponent, they get to then roll the, uh, roll the dice and see what happens. If they get a Kraken, this time they can either give it back to you, which is going to shut down your turn, or they could take that dice and pass it to any other player to basically shut down their part of their next turn. Because remember, when you get three, that's the end of their turn. So for some strategy, well, that's if you have other to friends to play yeah. with. We don't. Yeah. There's only two of us. So yeah. in the duel, you're basically going to give it back to the other person. So like right up there, cracking. Arr. Um, now in the ship phase, if you if they roll ship? the swords, the ship. 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 Gotcha. Ship phase. Yeah. Uh, if they roll the swords, um, it's going to basically count. It's, you give that back to the active player, and it's going to count towards their raid dice for that turn. Okay, so that's bad for bad for you. Um, if you roll the coins, it's kind of like a wild card, though. So you get to set the dice wherever you want. You can turn it to that kraken. You probably don't want to give me swords back or anything like that, right? Um, if you roll a ship, it just goes back to me, and then I can decide whether I want to re-roll that or not. Um, the press your luck aspect yeah, the, right there. In case, like, if I already had two Krakens, I might not want to re-roll it and chance that. I'd rather, like, you know, use all of my swords or coins that I've got so far or something like that. Um, that's, that's basically it. You're basically rolling your dice, trying to avoid all the Krakens, trying to steal your opponent's gold. Um, and then when you, if you've got at least three of those swords, you can then decide, oh, hey, I want to launch that raid, okay? So however many of those you have, and there's also raid tokens in a three to six player game that you can also basically increase. Those are like kind of like successes that will turn into stealing gold from somebody else. But in a two player game, you don't, you don't use those. 
So you've got the uh, the swords. Let's say if I had three of them, that's going to be my each one of those is representative of uh, one of the ships, one of the pirate ships that you're bringing to raid your opponent. You're going to use those. You're going to roll those, and then depending on what you get, the coins are your successes. Um, swords, you're going to actually re-roll in the in the in the raid or the combat phase. Um, got some more coins, so that's good. So that, that would be like three coins I'm going to be stealing from Patrick. If I happen to roll tentacles or the kraken, that's going to basically, um, you know, dead in my combat only. It's, they don't count towards my three per, per turn for like. They freeze up those dice, but, so you can't use them. Yeah, they freeze up, not freeze up. So Free, you know. freeze. Yeah. Cold chili stops them. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Gross. Um, a little loud in here, so it's hard for me. It, it is. It is a little bit loud. Um, again, if I roll the ships. The ships basically represent the crew going mutiny on my ass, and so Patrick is going to get to roll the dice, and uh, and, and and hopefully if he gets some of those um, coins, they can help block some of my successes. And then if I roll a ship, it goes mutiny, they go mutiny again, and they go back to Brian's ass. Or he could get a tentacle, and all this tentacle and ass is making me all the have wonder. Yeah, think <laughs> the crack think and odd thoughts. Um, but with that, Patrick. Oh. <clears throat> and, each, and each player in the duel starts with five coins. So once you've stolen all of your opponent's gold, you basically will win the game. With that, Patrick, what would you say is your favorite thing about Dice and Pirates? I don't know, but somebody here loves that part of the game. Uh, I would say that the thing I like the most about Dice of Pirates has to be the components. Now, these aren't the actual components that are coming with the game, but... They're going to be close, and they're really cool. They could have done these with cardboard chits. They could have done these with some standard dice, but they don't. And so far, the graphic artwork on them looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to say it's going to be components for me, Brian. And if there's one thing that you had to pick that you like the most. Uh, my favorite thing about the game is actually the portability of it. It all fits in this nice little tin, which kind of looks like a little treasure box. Um, and it fits all those beautiful components right in there. I like things that come in small packages. So... I mean, literally, you can stick this in your pocket and keep it with you no matter where you are. So if you and your friends are at a bar or someplace and things get a little boring, you can always buck, bust out with Dice of Pirates. I know there's a lot of other mint tin games out there that are small, but this is kind of a cool little one to do. Um, if you had to pick one thing, though, that you didn't like about Dice of Pirates, what would you say it is? Um, I would say it's a little light on player option. So. You're, you're a little low on player choice. There's a lot of dice rolling involved, and I would say you're just a, a tad bit low on player choice for the kind of game that I would normally really, really gravitate to. And if you had to pick one thing that you like the least? Uh, I would probably say that uh, it, it's, there's, there's a little bit of uh, luck in this game, uh, to, put it, to put it bluntly. But sometimes you need, you need luck when you're a pirate. So. You certainly would. But, you know, for the kind of game that we're talking about, something you can bust out and, like, you know, teach really quickly uh, with a group of friends or at a bar or, like, just in a place you normally wouldn't play a game or in between other games. Like, you're not really, like, really so overly focused on what you're going to do next, too. So it moves quick. Yep, that's true. As a quick moving mechanism. It's my turn, it's your turn, it's my turn, it's your turn. So that's kind of neat, too. Unlike if you had a peg leg, you know, you probably wouldn't move you as would, quick. You would wobble. So. Yeah, you would go from place to place very, very, not very quickly. Yeah. But right now, Dice of Pirates is on Kickstarter. And I highly, 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 I highly encourage you to go down and pick, <laughs> pick up a copy of Dice of Pirates. Arr, get your booty on Kickstarter. I'm Patrick, that's Brian, this is Just Got Played. Thank you very, very much for watching.
you know, it's a little luck-driven game.